Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We have today, we have Mahmoud El Asir. He is the CTO and Senior Vice President of Global Technology Services at Verizon and Annette Rippert, Senior Managing Director, Accenture Technology North America. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Well, thanks for having us. So we're talking today about Verizon's migration to the cloud, but Verizon is a company that many people have familiarity with, Mahmoud, but just Lay out a few facts and figures for our viewers here. Sure, I would say Verizon is a Fortune 16 company. Uh, last year we made $126 billion from our kind of loyal customers. Um, we're, uh, we're, uh, today we deployed, uh, we're the first people to deploy uh, 5G and we have 98% coverage uh, in the US. We have, so we're America's fastest and most reliable wireless service. So it's a company that touches so many of our lives. Yeah. Earlier this year, Verizon selected AWS as its preferred cloud provider. What was one, what was the, 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 the impetus for moving to the cloud? And two, why, why, why AWS? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. But I'd like to zoom out a little bit more and talk about what is Verizon, what's our mission, and, and how we're kind of tackling it. And so I'd say when you think about uh, Verizon, our mission is to uh, deliver the promise of the digital world, right? Enable, uh, deploy 5G and enable uh, the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, as part of this, it's all about empowering humans to do more, right? Um, in Global Technology Solutions, our, our winning aspiration is to develop products and services that our customers and employees love. And then uh, we, uh, and also to be the destination uh, for world-class technology talent and be the investment innovation center uh, for the company. So when it comes to digital transformation, we look at the enablers and where we want to invest our energy and how do we want to leverage the right partners. So at the heart of our, I would say, technology transformation is the public cloud. Um, when you think about the public cloud, it's like where you want to, uh, it'll allow us to spend more of our energy building uh, solutions and for our customers and creating value for, for our customers. And also public cloud will allow us and our business to experiment faster, better, and cheaper. Uh, and technology, our focus is to, uh, we always say it on efficiency, speed, and innovation. So that's our kind of a motto. And, and uh, at the heart of this, uh, public cloud is, is a key kind of element uh, for our journey. Well, I want to get into that journey a little bit more, but Annette, I want to bring you into the conversation here. So Verizon is one of the leading communications companies that is migrating to the cloud at, at this scale. Yes. What are some of the lessons, as you have helped and observed and also helped this partnership grow, what are some of the, big, the key takeaways that you would say? Well, I think there's a couple. You know, if you uh, take a look at some of the lessons that uh, our clients learn, you know, when uh, at at Accenture, when we go into the market, we're really helping our clients think about how do we leverage technology for achieving business outcomes. You just talked about some extraordinary business outcomes that you're looking to achieve. And you'll do that through a variety of things, including leveraging technology. And so, just like that, we encourage our clients to be thinking about what is the business innovation? What is the outcome, the disruption that we're looking to achieve through leveraging technologies like AWS, right? I think secondly, if you think a little bit about uh, the importance in that journey of communicating that vision of what will it mean to be able to leverage that kind of technology. You just communicated a very strong vision. And that's so important to the change journey that many of these organizations go on. You know, there's importance of the investment strategy, but ultimately the uh, innovation that the organization itself, the engineers within the organization are a part of delivering. You know, the kind of innovation that you'll be delivering is really, it will not only make such a big impact on those in your enterprise delivering that, but you know, to all of us who are consumers of your business strategy, which would be fabulous. And I think in the end, you know, one of the most exciting things, and it's really sitting, Alexei, as, as we were talking a little bit about uh, some of what Verizon is doing earlier in the day, one of the most important things is really thinking about how this provides an opportunity for the enterprise to change. So, you know, moving to be a much more agile enterprise, being able to respond to market changes, and certainly, 
in the business that you're in, the market is changing every day. And so by leveraging innovative products like AWS's platform, you know, it really provides the opportunity to constantly leverage new technology in that environment. And that, the, as you said, the, the market is changing every day and customers are demanding things and companies are providing customers with things they don't even know that they want until, until they have them in their hands. How, at a time when customer differentiation is such a key competitive advantage, how are you staying ahead of the game and, and making sure that you know you, you're sort of getting inside the heads of your customers and then you're also delivering what, the, what they want and, and expect? Uh, customers comes first at the horizon, right? So at the heart of our technology is also um, uh, leveraging emerging technologies. So cloud is one, scaling AI ML is another one. One of the big program we're doing is how do you move personalization to one-on-one -on -one personalization? How do you make every customer feel they have their own network, our network, like their own network that's personalized for their needs, their own experience, their own plans, their own recognition. Uh, so that's key. So today when you think about most companies do segmentation or personalization at the cluster level. So one of the biggest thing is we're shifting now from systems of engagement and systems of records, we're inserting systems of insights. And systems of, uh, of insight allow us to build the DNA for every customer and will allow us to personalize the customer experience for every customer at the customer level based on all the data kind of we know about them from the data they use with us and allow us to personalize their experience. Uh, so what, how, what will that point. look like? What, what, will a, what will a personalized customer experience at Verizon look like in the future going forward? What are some of your goals and aspirations? Imagine you're like, a, you're, you've bought every iPhone since iPhone 1 through like iPhone 10, right? So when I can you show imagine up on our that. website, so, you, so you're an <laughs> iPhone enthusiast, right? So. So when you come up on our website, we recommend uh, like the iPhone, the next iPhone, say, hey, the next iPhone is up, next iPhone Red is up. Or, so we know more about you and your history, and we recommend the right accessories. We recommend, uh, so we tell you, hey, this stuff is coming. So you feel we are watching out for you. You're like, we know, we know you. We know you better than anybody. So at any touch point, when you come to us, we kind of tell you what's the next thing for you. And then even when you don't know, we go like from a network kind of performance, from everything, we proactively kind of uh, cater for you. That's a big one. Uh, the other one, how do you, when you want to talk to us, uh, how do you get leveraged technologies like chatbots and, and converse, conversational uh, IVRs and stuff, and make sure you feel you're like, we know you. If you have a, like a different accent, we recognize that accent, and you say, hey, do you want to speak in that uh, language? <laughs> So imagine the power of, of, of doing that. Versus today you have to do like you have a Spanish IVR, you have to have a, or have a Spanish kind of call center. Imagine through AI, ML and, and chatbots and stuff, you can recognize your, all the stuff and personalize the experience. Today at Verizon we're known for our network superiority and we have great customer experience, but we want to be known also for our experience the same way we're known for, for, for our network. Um, and we believe at Verizon there is always a higher gear. So we all aspire for the higher gear and aspire our customers to feel they have a horizon for every customer. So this, that's from the customer experience, and, and as you said, the goal is to have the customer feel that the company empathizes with them and really gets them. What about the workforce changes? I mean, Annette was talking about the importance of change management and, and, and the cultural shift that these kinds of transformations entail. Have you come up against any challenges at Verizon in terms of this, this migration? And sure, I would say <coughs> at, at the heart of our kind of transformation, there are, I would say, four main pillars. The first pillar is uh, enabling all these modern technologies. This is like cloud, cloud native, API, AI, ML. And especially, I go back to cloud. Uh, at the time of enabling cloud, it's very important to get everybody on board at the beginning of the journey. So one of the biggest things is to get like the security team on board as early in the process as possible, and making sure the security team is a development team, not, not just a kind of a controls team. So having an engineering team on the security side is a big one to kind of automate all this kind of, uh, all the security controls we need in the cloud, so we have the right guardrails and have everything automated. The other thing, same thing like with the audit teams, get them on board on the journey, have an advisory kind of board with the audit team and, and security team and legal teams, and everybody is onboarding on the journey. So that's, I would say, key and pay lots of dividends. It's an investment up front, but it pays lots of dividends uh, so you can move faster. It's like more of a slow down to speed up. Uh, so that's a big one. The second one is technology is one thing, but you need the culture. So you need to have sustainable momentum in, in, uh, in this kind of movement. Um, so the proxy uh, we wanted to have is, uh, is like have AWS, cert AWS certifications because you need 10% believers to have m momentum. So our proxy to believers is AWS certifications. So we put a program in place, we call it uh, Verizon CloudTrain. 
and, uh, and that training basically is like a 12 weeks, uh, six sprints, and we uh, help our teams uh, prepare for the certification. So last year we did more than 1,000. We have more than 1,800 people probably right now uh, certified with AWS. Yeah, that's incredible. At the same time, we set up uh, dojos, which are like immersion centers. So we have like 40, 50 seats in different cities and with like five, six coaches. So if you're a team who wants to come in and move your application to the cloud, we help you do it. If you want to decomponentize your application to microservices, we help you. If you want to do APIs, we help you. So we help you build deep expertise into these technologies we're doing. So that's like to transforming the teams and the upskilling, I would call it upskilling the talent is, is key. Hiring right talent in key roles is also key. The third pillar is changing the way we work from a, what we call it project-based to outcome-based. And this is beyond Agile. Agile is an enabler for this, but how do you change the model where everything is outcome-based, where you have a business and technology team working together to uh, move an outcome? If I want uh, to increase my kind of video on demand revenue per customer, Everybody is making all the changes, experimenting, and making sure that's the needle's moving. It's not like I did my code, I delivered my, I did my testing, I deployed my app. It's uh, what's the business impact, what's the customer kind of expectation. And the fourth one is how do you uh, establish internal kind of communities uh, and uh, get out of like the fiefdoms and stuff and, and get every, have a culture of uh, kind of ex uh, uh, sharing and, and cheering for others and so we have like uh, DevOps days internally within the company. We bring in external internal speakers. Uh, we have uh, internal kind of inner sourcing for some piece of code. And so you have to fire on all cylinders, I would say, and get as many kind of uh, parties included as early in the process and have a, also a, an objective to have everything as code. Uh, and it's a journey. So you have to always keep on exercising new muscles and more muscles and, and the more muscles you exercise, the faster you can go. And, so Mahmoud, Annette, Annette already shared with us her key learnings from, from, your, from your experience and your journey. What would you say, I mean you're here at AWS reInvent, it's not your first rodeo, you've been to this conference many times before. When you're talking with other CTOs, CIOs, and they're saying, hey, so what's, how's it going for you? I mean, what's your advice for a company that, that is really just starting this, this process? Sure, I would say the movement to the public cloud is not just a cost play. I mean, cost needs to be, efficiency needs to be there, but that shouldn't be the, uh, the primary kind of objective. The primary objective should be speed and innovation. At the same time, you'll deliver a cost. There are lots of people who say, oh, uh, do I, uh, is it same? You can't compare the same for same, but it's because it's different. And uh, on prime, you can do like A-B testing in the cloud, you can do A to Z testing for much cheaper. You don't need everything you, need, you have on prime. You can experiment, so think about it, accelerating the speed of innovation, that's the key one. And I said it before, but I'll say it again, it's like all about having the right kind of engine, like from a security perspective. People would argue, oh, public cloud, is it secure? I would argue public cloud can be more secure than on-prem because you have all the tools to kind of automatically uh, kind of protect and detect and recover and, and you have more tooling to allow you to be more secure. It's having the right kind of guardrails and the right uh, controls, right automation and right teams. So it's, you have to build the muscle in, across all these fronts um, and have them up as upfront as possible. Great, a note, great note to end on. Thank you so much, Mahmoud and oh, Annette. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very good. It's been really fun having you on the show. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. We will have Thanks more so from theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.